So four months after the U.S. urged Americans to reconsider visiting Jamaica due to crime, the U.S. Department of State has reissued the Level 3 Travel Advisory. Zooming in now to discuss this, opposition spokesperson on tourism, Senator Janice Allen. Welcome to Smile. Good to have you. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Thank you both for having me. Good morning to all your viewers. Good to see you. Boy, what in your estimation does this mean for us? It's a very general question, but anecdotally, when you see this being done again, what are your thoughts? Well, um, this matter is something, it's certainly a cause for concern. It's very hard to ignore. The reality is that, as you said, four months after issuing one, we have another on our doorsteps. And the frightening part about it is that I think for the first time that I am aware, we have seen some, I believe it is uh, seven parishes have been listed as uh, places to not venture into. And so advising particularly US travelers to not to venture into these places. I know over the years we have seen um, certain areas of flare up and this is not a new issue, but the extent to which this has become a real and pressing issue for Jamaicans and the industry is something certainly of concern. Um, what the impact will be, we don't know necessarily, but one can safely say that it will have some impact because travelers today have so much information at their fingertips so readily, so easily that they will come upon this information and it has the potential to have grave impact on the industry. Um, so, so what I want to, as we said, four months ago, it was issued, then it was pulled. Now it's being reissued. Why would that have happened? Why, what would have happened for them to pull it and then now to reissue? Well, I'm, I would only be speculating what would have caused them to pull it, but one would have to assume that maybe some things were going in the direction to suggest that things were becoming under control or coming under control. And the fact that it is back suggests that things are out of control mm -hmm. and that to, to warn their travelers, their citizens to, from coming to Jamaica is an indication that they're not comfortable with how things are. Um, the reality is that we face it every day. And I've said it before, and I will always maintain that if Jamaica is safe for Jamaicans, then we will not be having this conversation. If Jamaica is a place of ease and comfort for Jamaicans, we would not be having this conversation as to the potential impact on tourists. Jamaica are pulling the plug on certain music if it has any mention of crime, violence, or drug use. The music will not be played on air. Can this actually help drive down crime rates on the island? We have Houston's own rap legend, Bumby, here with us to talk about this. Is this a form of censorship, and will this make a difference in Jamaica? Well, yes and possibly. It is definitely a form of censorship. Um, free speech should be allowed to, to all people, as long as it doesn't offend or hurt anybody. Um, but the violence in Jamaica isn't a product of the music. The music is a product of the violence. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much how that works. Music is a reflection of the environment in which it's created in and by the people and the environment that they grew up in. So the violence that's spoken about in Jamaica is a reflection of the violence that people deal with in Jamaica. Um, and so it's just a reflection of the environment. It's not really something that started the violence. Now, obviously, there can be some violence that's attributed to some of the artists and the music, but these things happen in all genres pretty much. Should they be looking at the economy and employment and other issues where they can get people off of the streets, not committing crimes in Jamaica? Obviously, their main industry there is tourism, and they're yes. concerned about tourists not coming to Jamaica because of the crime. But should they focus their efforts on employment and poverty in order to address crime in that community of course. or um, that nation? Yeah, of course, because... Crimes are typically, you know, committed because people lack opportunity. Mm -hmm. People lack resources. People lack jobs, commerce, um, just good old fashioned money. And so when people can't afford to get what they need, sometimes, you know, for their family's sake, they will take what they need. I'm not saying it's right, but it's p pretty much what happens. Mm -hmm. If people have more opportunities for employment, people have more opportunities um, to take their families out of the ghetto, more opportunities to get their children in good school. Um, yeah, I think the crime rate would go down because people wouldn't necessarily have to fight in order to eat, have to fight in order to live and survive day to day. Now, in Jamaica, also one of the issues there is the crime problem, but there's, and, and if they ban the music on the radio, still the internet. Yeah. What are you going to do about the internet? Well, here's the reality, right? Banning the music doesn't really, doesn't really help anything. 
You know, I mean, look at America. I mean, if you tried to ban music that did that talked about crime and drugs, you'd probably take 70 percent of the music off the radio. And I'm not talking about rap music, pop music. And, and keep in mind, music. most young people <clears throat> now listen to the Internet, not the radio. Yeah, no, most people do not get their musical influences or cultural influence, for that matter, from um, regular radio. You know, most people are getting everything they get from the Internet, from YouTube, um, you know, streaming and whatnot. Particularly now, I see all the popular music is coming directly from TikTok influence. Mm -hmm. In her contribution to the State of the Nation debate, Senator Sapphire Longmore highlighted the need for action to reduce the level of crime and violence that has plagued the nation in a major way. Senator Longmore notes the ripple effect on the society. There are four dimensions to health. Our physical health, our mental health, our social health, and our spiritual health. Now, let us further expand that and appreciate that illness can be physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. And violence indeed is indeed manifestations of such illness. She says though mental health may deal with one's emotions, the spiritual health is a sense of an individual's well-being. With regards to crime and violence, Senator Longmore says there's a generational disparity. Because when we explore a child who is abused and their spirit gets broken, that inner light in them that gets extinguished and they then develop a sense of revenge and hate.